quality of the services provided by a specialty pharmacy is valuable commodity to the manufacturer because the representation of the pharmacy to its patients and providers either reinforce the manufacturer's brand or have a negative impact on the business. Nick, what do you see as a reliable determinant of quality and stakeholders should use to evaluate a specialty pharmacy? So, I mean, this is a great question because there's, there's so many um, different units of measure um, in, in this space. T to me, again, it always begins with the patient. You know, did the patient complete therapy and what were the outcomes? Uh, it, it, you know, one of the most rewarding piece of being in specialty pharmacy is you have a opportunity to have a positive effect on a patient um, and benefiting their, their um, journey through handling this chronic disease that, that they're managing. Um, the, the measures that a uh, manufacturer, payer, and, and stakeholders um, that look at are, are everything from satisfaction on, on the patient's journey through, satis uh, you know, through surveys, um, both from the payer and the, and the patient, um, as well as discontinuation rate, side effect management. There's so many pieces of your assessment interactions that you can document and, and show. It's, it's, it's just a great opportunity to really show the, the difference between specialty pharmacy and traditional pharmacy. Cheryl, any other, anything to add on that? What, what is the manufacturer looking at? Sure, I think it, one of the key things that we've been asked continually by manufacturers is, what is your core offering to patients? I mean, um, because of OIG uh, investigations into certain um, services, service offerings, uh, we've really uh, been able to look at the, the core offering and how does that differ from any enhanced service. So I think really drilling down into the core offering, understanding the patient touch points along the way that the core uh, has for the patient, and then how does that uh, fit into the journey that the manufacturer, particularly that brand team, you know, as they design their uh, strategy for the patient and the distribution channel, how do those touch points interplay? Uh, will there be a patient services offering at a hub? And how many times will this patient be called? So really understanding what's happening at the core level uh, at the specialty pharmacy is very important. Yeah, I think the manufacturers are really looking at specialty pharmacy to, to, to get their patients on therapy and to keep them on therapy. And I think one of the things that, that manufacturers look at is really what is that, that specialty pharmacy's access to a payer life? Uh, do they have access to the plans, the MCOs, the PBMs, so that when they get a patient, they have the ability to bill that prescription to the appropriate vendor? Um, I, I think additionally, it's consistent manufacturer-centric uh, programs. You see many oncology products in the marketplace today. Does the specialty pharmacy have the clinical expertise to support that patient through, its, through therapy? And that not only includes the ability to get patients on therapy, but can you make additional outreach to that patient? So certain oncology products, you know at day three, that patient's gonna suffer from GI distress and, and perhaps uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. But there are some steps that, a, that a, a pharmacist can do to outreach to that patient right at the time of, of therapy in order to keep that patient successful on its drugs. So manufacturers are constantly evaluating, do you have the operation to support? Do you have access to the payer lives? Do you have the clinical expertise? And, and really, uh, do you have all the services required to support that patient through their therapy? And, the, and then I think they're using, um, you know, first fill persistency and NPR rates to, to you know, measure that success. Yeah. No, absolutely. When you, when you think about that, when you think about many of the prescriptions are being aggregated at a patient services hub, I think from a, a manufacturer perspective, you're looking at if they get a script, are they converting it? And if they're converting it to an actual fill, what's that percentage? If I'm sending that, that particular specialty pharmacy 100 prescriptions, how many are they actually turning into a fill? So I think that's really important. Absolutely. You already t touched on turnaround time. When they send that script, how long is it taking in the turnaround time? Is it, is it five days, is it seven days, is it 14 days? I, I think that's so important. And then of course, persistency. Are they staying on therapy? Uh, some, of, some of the measures that, that manufacturers are looking at to, to make a successful launch. And I think as Nick mentioned as well, um, uh, the evolution towards outcomes. And I think really the next wave of specialty pharmacy quality initiatives are really going to be focused around outcomes um, because outcomes really help 
um, play a role in that value decision, the overall value decision um, of specialty pharmaceuticals themselves. Um, when we look at the qualitative and quantitative components of value, specialty pharmacies can play a huge role in providing that real world data not only to uh, payers and manufacturers, but also physicians and patients, uh, providing that real-world feedback. So I think that's really the next evolution of specialty pharmacy services is really the focus towards outcomes and where does specialty pharmacy fit in in the overall value picture. Very important. I think as well, you know, just to follow up on that, um, particularly in the oncology space and being able to outreach, touch that patient, understand what's happening. You know, we talk about not only speed to therapy, time to fill, but duration that the patient is on that therapy, understanding what's happening with that patient. Uh, oftentimes within oncology, there's down dosing. So understanding what's happening, is the dose being reduced? Is the pharmacy able to work with that patient through side effects to keep the patient on therapy? And if they do need to take a break in therapy, can they recoup that patient back on service when their counts have recovered, sure. for example? And I think in that regard, um, data, you know, going back to data aggregation and designing a, a data set that really provides actionable data so that we can understand from uh, all of the stakeholders what's happening with that patient in the journey. We always try to report, so in our assessments, our contacts with the patients, we always try to report all the different touches and, and what happened and why um, because I think that's the most important piece. If there's a down dose you need to or a titration if someone's starting therapy, uh, a manufacturer or payer may see the claim as that's not right. You know, why is the patient starting on a lower dose? When, but documenting the reasons behind it I think are, are, is the wave of the future.